Have you a watched that a... movie yet? Home Alone? Yeah, have you watched it this season? Oh, yeah. I thought you meant ever. I was like, well, Aaron. obviously, obviously. I, I didn't watched. know you could offend me. <laughs> <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> Middleish, the podcast about moderation and all things. I am Michael Gray. And I am Erin Green. And as you're listening to this, it is the new year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's 2022. Yeah, yeah it's December 21st, 2021, while we're recording. <laughs> when you listen to this, it'll be the new year. So happy new year. <laughs> I saw a meme the other day that said, um, you know, next year is pronounced 2020. Two, and it has like yeah. you know like part two oh, oh, and i'm just yeah. like oh god can we not even joke about that yeah i saw that and i just got angry i was like why would you do that <laughs> like some things can just be kept to yourself okay too soon too soon y'all yeah, we can't joke right? about that <laughs> oh, uh, this year really has going? flown by though it it, um, it, it has feels it's bizarre insane. that we're already entering you know another year yeah, it feels like it wasn't very long ago that we did our New Year's uh, episode for Middleish last year. Like, yeah. it doesn't feel that long ago. You know, it's kind of wild. I know. We're coming Time up on flies two years. You're having fun. I know. Yeah, it's we're great. like at a year and a half of this bedness. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So um, that's just maybe a reminder for all of you if you want to go back and listen to last year's new year's episode i think it was called the new year's resolution makeover is that what it was called anyway i think so first first episode of 2021 go listen to it because we i think it's a really good discussion on mm -hmm. what people think about as they enter a new year we get a lot of new year's resolutions and thoughts about what you want to change about your life you know it's a fresh start. And we, I think just had a really good perspective on how to approach some of those things and not get sort of caught up in the, the traditional, like, Hey, I'm going to do this, like whole hog, crazy right. over the top transformation. And by week three, you're like, Oh my God, I can't do it. Right. I can't do this because it's insane. And I'm overhauling my entire life. Like to, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. To the like little minutia mm -hmm. and important things. And yeah. And I think uh, geez, I probably should have listened to that episode before we did this one, but um, I think we talked about this. I know we've talked about this a lot. Like we're not anti-resolution. I think sometimes people are like, I see some coaches like go kind of the opposite way about mm. like, there's nothing, you know, magical about the new year, which is true. And I get that. And I've probably said that too, but like, they kind of go hard in the paint on that, you know, like, yep. why are, don't wait for this. And like resolutions are stupid, you know, anti-resolutions. And it's like, okay, let's chill out a little bit. Like, we're not there. I think anything, you know, a new month, a, a Monday, you know, start of the week, a new year, like, yeah, there's nothing magical about those things, but they also feel like a start, mm -hmm. you know, and I get why people don't want to start a new workout program on a Wednesday. Cause it just kind of feels weird. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> yeah. and I get why, like, yeah, the new year brings about, I think for most of us kind of time to reflect on the past year. And what we want the next year to be different or how we want it to be different. And, you know, so we are, well, I guess I can't speak for you, but I'm going to speak for you. You can tell okay. me if I'm wrong. Go for it. <laughs> we're I not anti-resolutions <laughs> or I think we're anti how resolutions are typically approached, yeah. you know, and, but I think, I think the new year can be a great time to, to just say, you know what, I want to do some things differently. And mm -hmm. there is a start to some things and, um, I think that it could be a good time for transition. Yeah. And we have some good things for you to start Boy, working on ever. Yes. I'm actually really psyched about this episode. I know you've said that numerous times and it gets me really excited to talk <laughs> about this too. I'm like, sweet. Yeah. I just think, um, you know, we're just, we're just going to talk about some ways, um, some concepts, I guess, some approaches to, to the new year and to resolutions and mm -hmm. whatever they are, um, how to, how to develop them, implement them, design them, create them, whatever 
in ways that are truly sustainable. Because I mean, you know, we've talked about, I don't have it pulled up right now, but we've talked about the, uh, the, the numbers before and the drop off rates with resolutions are mm-hmm. insanely high. I mean, I think mm-hmm. it's something like by mid February, like just about everybody's like, uh, yeah, it's like 70 or 80% are have abandoned <laughs> yeah. their resolution. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. And I think a lot of the reason for that is that we, we go into it with these resolutions, um, with our expectations, very, very high. Mm-hmm. And with the amount of work it's going to take to accomplish them very high. And mm-hmm. we don't allow ourselves, um, the opportunity to be people mm-hmm. <laughs> who have stuff comes up and life happens and we need mm-hmm. to change and adapt things. And, and we set these things very firm and very rigid and very black and white. And then when they can't be that because life is life and that's the way this goes, then it's like, uh, okay, well, I I'm guess done. I'm done. I'm yeah. tapping out. Yeah. Maybe next year. Yeah. Yep. So I just, I just really like this, the way we're, what we're going to talk about today, because it's, it's really how to set these things up in a way that, um, that really allows you to be a person and continue to make progress that lets life happen and continue, um, gives you flexibility and adaptability and that kind of stuff. So, right. And that's just a yeah. thing I get excited about. We had, well, just, gummy yeah, bears. just a little excited <laughs> and mm. bourbon. Oh, and my kids too. <laughs> and your kids. Yeah. Let's not forget them. <laughs> yeah. So we have, I mean, more specifically five things that I would say, you know, Michael, you just said our expectations are really high. And sometimes the pressure is really high when we go into the new year to like execute, right? Like we're just going to do this thing. I'm going to completely overhaul this portion of my life. And I would say that these five things that we are presenting today are probably pretty low for most people when they head into that mindset of, I have to just change the way I'm doing things and I'm going to, you know, be very rigid and inflexible, whatever these, these five things we're going to talk about today, uh, I think tend to be missing when people Mm -hmm. set those new year's resolutions or, or a lot of goals in their lives. So, um, hopefully this will be a good reminder for you and, you know, maybe just pick one of these things, maybe keep them all in mind, you know, take notes, whatever on the things that really resonate with you that will actually help you in whatever new year's resolution. So we don't have ideas for actually what you should change or might change in your life. These five things are simply concepts to help you approach whatever that thing is that you want to change. So it's working in tandem with that goal that you have and helping to support that, that change that you want to see in yourself. So that is our mission today. Yeah. I I think I've been saying this recently and I I like it. So I'm going to say it again. Um, Like these are these are ways to like establish some good soil for healthy habits Mm. and behaviors and routines to grow in, you know? And I think a lot of the time when we talk about resolutions, when people make resolutions, the soil is like that guilt and regret and desperation and feeling hopeless. Mm. And I've, I press pressure because I've got to get it right. There's like, it's, there's so much intensity, you know, that it's Mm. just like, it's not good fertile soil to, to let habits grow in. It's like, man, you got, hopefully it's just right or it's all going to collapse and and all the stuff's going to die real quick. And that's what we see. I think a lot. So, yeah. yeah. So So, we're going to till the soil and put in some nutrients. We're going to be farmers. We farmers do it. Let's Let's farm this up. (laughs) Let's grow some shit here. Let's grow some shit. You know what? Hey, but that's a good analogy, right? Like think about farmers, like think about like in the off season, right? Like they're they're tilling the soil, they're preparing it. They know that it's not instant, that it's a process and it's entire season Mm -hmm. you go through. So yeah, we're going to be farmers. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do this. So top of our list today is simplicity. simplicity. Okay. So the first of the five things that will help you support whatever change you want to see in yourself in the new year. Simplicity. I think Mm -hmm. this is just counterintuitive to what people think a goal or a new year's resolution should be. 
they think it needs to be this huge overhaul or a completely, you know, different version of me or a different approach to something. It can be something very simple. And I'm talking like, you know, just preparing a meal at home more often than you eat out. It doesn't, you know, that's, that's a pretty broad, but very simple thing. Mm -hmm. Um, writing in a journal, keeping one on your desk or by your bedside or something. So you can just like jot Mm -hmm. down some thoughts, no expectations on that, or just keep it very simple. It could be like reaching out to a family member or a friend with like a weekly phone call, or, you know, just making that intention that I want to be more connected to people. There's so many ways to just boil this down to one simple act versus saying, Oh, I want to, you know, do meal prep every Sunday and have all of my meals for the week prepared. Like, let's just simplify this a little bit. Yeah, for sure. And I, you know, I think the longer, you know, I've been a coach for a little over 13 years and the longer I've done this, I think the, the more I've dove into like simplifying goals for clients, Mm -hmm. you know, when I started out, I used to, yeah, we're going to, you know, we're going to cut out all the process stuff and we're going to be low carb and we're not going to, eat after this time and you're going to eat, drink this much water, you know, I'm just, and you're going to have a cheat day and everything's going to be rigid. And, and that's kind of where I started. And the further I, the longer I've done this, um, the more I've realized like that just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it can, it's good for like the three months before and after pictures, (laughs) you know what I mean? Where people are like, Whoa, that's amazing. You know, look at the difference in this person and da, da, da. It's not good for the year later picture or two year later picture, because most of the time that stuff, it just doesn't stick because when we try to make, you know, big changes in a lot of ways at once, like that's a stressor, even if Mm -hmm. it's for a good reason, right? Like that's a stressor. And it requires time and attention and energy. And we still have our lives. We still have all the things happening that were happening before we made these goals Mm -hmm. that we have to tend to. And when our goals and our resolutions require a large amount of our time and energy and attention, Mm -hmm. well, then we've like, now we're trying to give and take. Sure. Yeah. And we're trying to still do everything. And And then when we have these goals that have to be met in the way we decided they're going to be met (laughs) yeah, and we can't do it anymore because we still got to take care of life. Well, then that's when people really quickly feel like, well, I I just, I failed again, you know, and it's not really that you're not able to, it's that we need to take on small things, get efficient at them, make them habitual, make them a part of our lives and then build on them. Mm -hmm. You know, and I always tell people like, it seems like this is like the tortoise and the hare and, and that we're taking the, um, like the really slow approach, you know, Mm -hmm. by doing this. But if like, if we go out with, you know, start with like a bang and we do all these things and then three months later, we're not doing any of them, which is most people's story over and over and over. Right. Isn't it quicker to like, Mm-hmm. do, do a couple things and get good at them and then build on that. And, and just never like mm-hmm. abandon everything. <laughs> like, right. It's actually the faster way to get there. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and sim- simplicity breeds confidence. Mm-hmm. So if you can do this thing, like I, I have a client right now that set these, I think I talked about this a couple episodes ago, but she, you know, ha- comes from a running background. She was a very accomplished runner in her younger years and she's gone through injuries and, you know, is just in a different place in her life right now. And so it's been really hard for her to set these simple kinds of goals and intentions. But what she's found is that the more she accomplishes these simple things and she's consistent with them, her confidence is growing from that. And when you have, I mean, confidence is not something that you can just like, impart on someone like as a right. coach, I'm, you can relate to this. It would be great if you could just, I want to just help you be more confident mm-hmm. so you can accomplish this thing. Simplicity can really help with that because you're boiling it down to something manageable and doable for you. And even when life gets in the way, okay, you have a presentation at work, your kid gets sick. Um, mm-hmm you just did not have time to get to the grocery store, whatever Mm -hmm. it is, you can take that little simplified 
thing that you plan to do and say, well, I can still do this. I Mm -hmm. can still make a meal at home. Even if I didn't get to the grocery store this week, Mm -hmm. let's get creative and figure this out. I can still write in my journal today, even though I didn't do it the last four days because I had things blow up in my face. So you can put some of those simplified measures in place, basically in any situation that your life dishes Mm -hmm. up and it breeds confidence. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and confidence then breeds confidence, I think, Mm -hmm. right? Like when we get confident that we can do a few things, then when we go to, I'm like, I see this all the time with clients, like, okay, how about if we add this? It's like, yeah, I can do that because yeah, I I know that I did this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, oh, I'm capable of doing these things. And I think a lot of times we, I'll be honest, I think we approach, you know, changes to our life, especially resolutions from not confident places. Like we make oh, yeah. these, these resolutions and our fingers are crossed. And we're just like, I hope I get it right Scared. this time. Yeah. Here we go. You know, yep. buckle up. And like, that's just no way to approach this. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I would say for some people it works because some people really, if, if you have experience in your life where you have taken on huge, like, Oh shit kinds of goals before. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, you know, sort of, this is pushing the limit for me. Again, we've said this numerous times, moderation looks different for everybody. Right. Right. And, and everyone has simplicity looks different for everybody. Simplicity for me looks very different for someone else. What we're encouraging you to do is if it scares you a little, probably good, you know, like a Mm -hmm. little intimidating to like set a goal. But if it's like, if you are like crossing your fingers and like, Oh my God, I hope this works. And I don't even know. Mm -hmm. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Maybe let's like, just explore that a little bit more and see, see if there's a way to, to simplify it down so that it actually can be a consistent thing in your life. Yeah. And I think my last thought on this is that I think, look at your past attempts at making healthy changes to your life Mm -hmm. and have they worked out. Okay. For most Mm -hmm. of us, no, not for very long. Right. Like that's a lot of us are on this cycle of attempting and things falling apart and feeling like we shouldn't be doing this, you know, this, this ugly wheel. And if you're, so look at those past attempts and what do they have in common and how are you going to simplify things from that place this year to do them in a way that is maybe more sustainable. Just take a good, honest look at them because if they, if your resolutions this year look really similar to that, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. it's, it's probably not because it's not that you have to figure out how to take on these large things, mm-hmm. like, you know, the fitness and nutrition industry is kind of like beat over us over the heads with it's that you need to make things fit your life and, and manageable for you. And so if, if your approach is looking like it has in the past, that might be a, a good indicator that we need to do things a little bit differently this time around. Mm-hmm. And, um, this kind of dovetails into our, our second, um, concept that will help you in your new year. I think just going from simplicity to our second one, which is grace, a lot of people who are high achievers and they have, a, they say yes to everything. And you have a lot of different directions. You're being pulled. Simplicity can be a theme for you to latch onto and really bring into your life so that you're not being pulled in a thousand different directions. And this leads me to grace because often those people who are (laughs) doing everything for everybody don't really show themselves grace when it comes to, you know, if you do get overwhelmed or if you Mm -hmm. forget something, God, we all have, I actually forgot a call with a client. I was sick last week and I had had a consult with her. And I wrote down the date and time of our next consult. And my, my usual MO is to go straight into zoom and put a calendar invite in. So it's like confirmed for both of us. Mm -hmm. And I was sick. And so I like went and took care of myself and, you know, took a nap and whatever, and completely forgot. And so she's kind of texting me, are we meeting today this week? And I was like, oh my God, of course, it's hugely embarrassing for me. And I spent a good like 20 minutes grieving over this and being really pissed at myself. And like, how could you do this? This is so unprofessional because I hold myself to a high standard. Um, And I had to remind myself that, look, 
I mean, she was super gracious about it. She was like, well, I know last time we talked, you were pretty miserable. So (laughs) it was no big deal for her. Um, but anyway, that's just my example of saying, look, you show, and I have a definition here for grace an attractively polite manner of behaving. That means to yourself too. be mm-hmm. polite to yourself. <laughs> yeah. I like that. And here's the thing about like, I think grace, like grace, isn't just a good idea. If we're going to do things sustainably, it's required. Like mm-hmm. you're not going to do things sustainably unless you are able to be graceful to yourself and show yourself grace about the fact that you're a human being who is living life. And The thing about life is it doesn't matter how great your plans are and your strategies and your intentions are, it's going to change. And things come up that we don't expect all the time, little things and huge things. And, and what we see so often is people, it's like, I have the plan and the only way I can be successful is if I execute the plan, like I told myself I was going to execute the plan. It has to happen the way I thought it was going to, or the way I planned on it. And if it doesn't, then I'm screwed. Right. And like, if that's our approach to things, you're, you're going to be eternally screwed because plans are going to consistently fall through. They don't always like a lot of times they don't. And that's great. But when they don't happen the way things don't happen, the way we, we want them to, then we've got to be okay with that because this isn't, this is part of the process. And I think sometimes people think that we have to plan things just right and just perfectly. So we avoid all the things that are going to seemingly knock us off track. And it's like, no, that's not the point. That's not how we do this long-term. How we do this long-term is when inevitably a hundred percent, a bunch of times, something's going to happen. That's going to knock us out of sorts and mess up our plans, how we respond to that. That's where sustainability lies. And that's, that's what grace is, is allowing ourselves to go like, Oh, okay. Like that didn't work out so well, but what do I do now? Like, how do I handle it? How do I adapt or pivot or just go, okay, that was today. Let's get back at it tomorrow. Because what we do is we take these, these really truly insignificant things, right? Like a a random Tuesday in July. And we act like, like our whole progress hinges on this day or this decision or this week Mm -hmm. or whatever, but really a year from now, it doesn't freaking matter at all. And we give all this weight and importance to these insignificant moments and then Mm -hmm. use those to just belittle ourselves and beat ourselves down and reinforce these, these scripts that we've talked about before, you know, about like, I'm just not got cut out for this. I don't have what it takes, you know, Mm -hmm. all this stuff when it's just like, no, this moment, this, this moment is meaningless. Right. And so we, we take, when we show ourselves grace, we take away the power that those little insignificant moments can steal from us. And we hold on to that and we don't allow them to be defining things. And we reinforce this opportunity to show ourselves grace and reinforce that this is how I'm going to treat myself. This is how I'm going to interact with myself. And this is how my, my journey and my process is going to be um, executed is with a foundation of grace that Mm -hmm. things are not going to go like I planned a lot. And that's okay. That's part of it. Responding with grace is how we continue to make progress through those times. And notice how that feels when you, when you have those moments where you maybe have a reaction of how you might think about yourself or what you might say to yourself. And if you can consciously choose this attractively polite manner of behaving, Mm -hmm. um, perhaps just see how that feels. If it shifts your energy a little bit, if it brings you through that ickiness a little faster and something we've talked about before is a lot of times people are willing to show others grace before themselves. And so maybe think about if somebody did this to you, right? So for my example, if somebody had dropped the ball on an appointment for me and I thought we were meeting and it's non-emergent, right? Like I'm just home and waiting on zoom or kind of you know, waiting for this appointment to happen, all that person would have to do to make it right is to follow up with me and be like, oh my gosh, this is what happened. I'm really sorry. Let's reschedule and put it as mm-hmm. a priority and show me that they care. And then mm-hmm. I'm like, well, yeah, we're good. No big deal. Mm-hmm. So for me to kind of take a moment and tell myself like, what would I need if I were on the receiving end of this 
flub yeah. to feel better. And it helped me just be like, okay, well now I have meaningful, tangible action of what I need to do to make this right. And mm-hmm. it's over. Like you move mm-hmm. forward. And I think yeah. that's an important thing to just recognize how that, how that feels. Yeah. And I also think it's important, this kind of, you know, relates to my scenario to show other people grace when they piss you off or when something right. doesn't happen the way you want it to happen, because yeah. holding, holding in that, um, Oh, what's the word I'm looking for that like judgment of another person or that frustration or, you know, wishing that Mm -hmm. they had done something differently and just holding that or being angry, even on the road at somebody like any of that stuff, (laughs) being angry at somebody in line in front of you because they're Mm -hmm. taking for freaking ever to check out and they're wanting to use every coupon in their wallet. And you're like five minutes late. Mm -hmm show some grace to other people, because I'm telling you in the long run, lower blood pressure, a better life in general, like just a better mood. You're probably less likely to engage in compensatory behaviors, like emotional eating or punishment through food and exercise. It'll decrease your stress. Um, people will like you more. Like it'll just, you'll start noticing how people respond to you when you're very gracious and you're just kind of easygoing. So I invite people to, to not only show themselves grace, but also think about in other situations, how can you show other people grace? And that will help you with whatever goal or resolution you have. Completely agree. Um, so on, on the grace thing, I, uh, when this airs, I, I might have already shared this on social media. So if this is a familiar story, well, you're going to get it twice. So deal. With <laughs> <laughs> but I got this text from a client um, just last week and she was, it was a check-in for her. She's going to work out this day. And she sent me this. She said, I'm not going to get a workout in today. Things are incredibly stressful around here. I need to take that off my plate and that's okay. No guilt, just grace. And I got so excited about that text Yeah, because it it's, so one, it's, she needed to do this. I, I, I've had this, she's, she's become a really good friend of mine. Like mm-hmm. I, she's been a client of mine for a long, long time. And I know that if she says, I need to take this off my plate, she needs to take it off her plate. Right. And it's easy to look at that and be like, oh, you plan to work out and you're not doing it. So that's like a failure, right? Like, mm-hmm. oh, you should have just figured out how to fit it in. You should have planned better, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of the industry would say that, you know, But for me, it's like, clearly that wasn't going to be a healthy thing in your day. And so what happens when we don't show ourselves grace a lot of times is we, we miss giving ourselves credit for making healthy choices. And so what she did was the right thing. Like this is going to, this is going to negatively impact my mental and emotional health today and maybe physical health too. You know, like maybe she is going to run her into the ground and she didn't have that in her. And mm-hmm. so she made, made a choice to go, nope, even though this was the plan and this is what I set out to do, I'm not going to do it. And, and if we feel guilt about those things, then we're tying guilt to good choices. <laughs> and yep. now we're really messed up. Right, right. Now it's really hard to tease out, like, how am I supposed to feel about anything? Because we're making actually healthy choices, but we're piling mm-hmm. guilt on ourselves for them. That's such and a good point. Yes. And so, and so what she did is she's recognizing my health is bigger than this workout. My, my belt, my health is bigger than any workout. Right. And I need to abandon what I planned and choose the healthy, healthy thing. And this is showing myself grace. And this is actually me making a good choice and recognizing, acknowledging it. And too often we make those choices Mm -hmm but we don't recognize what they are because it's just a riddle with guilt because it wasn't what we said we were going to do. Mm-hmm. I love it. That that's the perfect way to wrap up that grace. I love that you pointed out, you know, we put negative connotations on something that's actually really good for us to do, but that's how yeah. our society has conditioned us. So, right. Um, number three is number three. trust. Trust. Yes. And the concept of trust comes in. I talk about trust a lot when I talk about food relationship and body cues, Mm -hmm. um, 
trust is also a big part of this whole simplicity and showing yourself some grace. And then the other Mm -hmm. two aspects we're going to talk about, trust is a big part of this process. And when you trust that the small steps lead to big changes, when you trust that the consistency actually pays off in the long run versus these, these huge you know, pendulum swings in your life. And also when you trust that making a small, meaningful change in one aspect of your life can lead to improvements in a lot of other aspects. So your client Mm -hmm. saying this has to come off my plate. She's trusting herself to make that decision and to be the the captain of her own ship, right? In her life. Yeah. And she's also trusting that this actually is going to improve my health because I have better stress management. Maybe I'm going to get more sleep. Maybe I'm going to go visit with a friend or family member that she really mm-hmm. needs to, to fill her life. And so there's other aspects of her health that are being addressed in that yeah. decision. And so I think trusting those kinds of things is a big, a big piece too. Absolutely. And it's kind of like the simplicity thing, you know, where like confidence breeds confidence, trust breeds trust. And for me, this trust piece, you kind of touched on both these, but it really has two real distinct factors. And one that is trusting the process and recognizing that a a process is a process, right? Right. Like it's not just here are the boxes you take and now you do it forever. Like processes, like I think about like, you know, I, in, in, in business, probably the thing I struggle with the most is like the marketing piece. I'm not good at it. I'm not great at sales. You know, I just, I struggle with that. And, you know, so I read a lot about marketing and that kind of stuff. And, and what you notice is like over time, these people who are really good at marketing are constantly having to change how they approach things because like uh, the, the hive mind changes, right? Like mm-hmm. social media changes. There's, there's new ways to approach things. There's things that people caught people's attention last year don't now. And, right. and it's not just, okay, here's the plan and you follow it in perpetuity, right? It's like the process is constantly adapting and changing. Same with us, with our, our process of getting healthier, it's going to have to constantly change and adapt. And like that going back to that grace piece, right? Like mm-hmm. it, that's part of it is that it's going to be one, it's something we do for a long time. And two, it's going to look a lot different, a lot of different points along the way. So for me, that's number one. The second piece is that trusting ourselves. And I think this is, I think this is something I won't say hundred percent, but pretty close to hundred percent of everyone I've ever worked with struggles with, yeah. because I really think that, you know, we've talked about this before on the podcast, this idea that we kind of outsource success like we put all of our trust in keto or a coach or the specific plan, or like, that's the thing. Something that's external, make me like successful. that thing. Oh. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because this industry really beats into us. Like you can't trust yourself. Mm-hmm. Like if you could trust yourself, you wouldn't be where you are. You're where you are because obviously you don't make good choices. You know, like that's the God. messaging, right? But it's like you, you sound like that bratty older sister that's like, obviously, you can't do this. <laughs> Duh. Sorry. Anyway. But is it but isn't that the message though? Yeah, totally. Like it's it's so mean and cruel and inaccurate. But yeah. it, and so we adopt it. We believe it. Like, okay, I can't trust me. So and here's the thing is the reason these like this outsourcing of success really never works out is because it doesn't work to outsource trust. Mm -hmm. Like we've got to, we've got to develop things in a relationship with ourselves and repair wounds and, you know, whatever that, that we can trust ourselves to take care of ourselves. Because the truth is, I don't think anybody, I think everyone is going to know way better how to best take care of themselves than anybody else outside is going to like, we're all going to know what's best for ourselves that may take work, maybe a lot of work, maybe a lot of time to get there, but that work to begin to trust yourself that you can trust your hunger and fullness cues. You can trust your choices in the moment um, is really critical because Mm -hmm. we can't, it just doesn't work if we were eternally trying to outsource this trust. Like we've, we've got to have it within us that, that we know we are capable of taking care of ourselves. 
Mm-hmm. And for a variety of reasons, a hundred percent, understandably, we don't. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I get it, but I, I want to make it very clear that I think that is a huge, ugly lie. I don't think it's at all true for any of us. I think that we all are capable of that where we just, we've been like trying to get healthy through a very abusive system that blames us for everything we quote unquote do wrong right. when it's set up against us. So we can never be successful. Like, of course, you're not going to trust yourself, but that's just, that's a bananas way to do this. And there's a better way. And I think if we begin to build trust and uh, like that confidence thing, little bits of trust in ourselves breeds more trust. And once we can get some traction, trusting ourselves, then we're really looking at moving forward in ways that are really free. You know, Mm -hmm. like there's a lot of freedom when you can trust yourself to take care of you. And I will remind our listeners that all of these things we're going through today, you can take with you into any scenario in the future Mm -hmm. and practice them, you know, indefinitely. This isn't the same thing as setting a very specific goal for, you know, this time frame, or trying this diet for 30 days or doing this, you know, workout program for however many days, these are concepts and, and they're complex. I mean, you don't just flip a switch and all of a sudden you trust yourself or you right. flip a switch and you show everybody grace <laughs> it's, it's practice. And so mm-hmm. that's what we're encouraging you to do is take these these ideas into your practice into your new year. Yeah. So, um, do you want to take kindness since this is sort of your, I don't want to say it's new for you because I think you've been a kind person for some time. (laughs) (laughs) For most of the time I've known when I I met you. you (laughs) Well, anybody can be kind for an hour at a time, right? Michael? That's true. (laughs) (laughs) Obviously. (laughs) Yeah. uh, No, I'll take that. Yeah. So number four is, is kindness and it is, it's, it's not something new to me, but it's a, it's a lane I've been really leaning into hard lately. Um, And just quick background on that. The reason for that is like, you know, again, you know, coaching as long as I have you, if, if you're paying attention and trying to get better at being a coach, you, you learn things and then you hopefully apply them. And you know, what I realized over the last, you know, 13 ish years is that so often the the reason people begin to exercise or try to change the way they eat or, you know, take care of themselves are are rooted in things, like I said earlier, in, in desperation and dislike of their body, you know, dissatisfaction with their life, um, you know, lack of value or worth, guilt, shame, like, these are the thing, these are the foundations from which they try to make healthier changes. Mm -hmm. And when you try to make changes from a foundation like that, we, we, we are willing to bring things into our lives that are very unhealthy because we're making those changes for unhealthy reasons. And so when that's the soil, right? Like we talked about, that for stuff to grow in, like we're going to have a lot of shit in there because it's not really about health. It's about fitting a mold or a picture or an expectation thinking that that's going to bring about Mm -hmm. satisfaction, you know, worth value, whatever. Or punishing yourself for all the wrongs that you've done for the last however many years, that punishment Mm -hmm. I think is strong too. Absolutely. And so I think the, the flip side of that is what if, and so it's like, we we're going to make these external changes, changes and hope they work their way inward down deep into who I am as a person. Right. 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 <laughs> and it's like, uh, okay. I don't know that that ever works. Um, the flip side is if we like lean hard into kindness and this includes simplicity and grace and trust. And these are all like, so interwoven, I think, which is the beautiful thing about these is like, this really is like a a tapestry. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like one of these really affects the others. And so when we feed one of them, it really feeds the others. But when we, if we start with a foundation of kindness, which includes grace and love for ourselves and patience and allowing things to be simple 
you know, learning how to trust ourselves, understanding that this is, this is not a crash course. This is a way I'm going to live my life, you know, forever, long-term when we have that in mind, then like one, we, we take away this pressure of having to get it right, right now. You know, I think that's, where that magic bullet kind of thing comes in is like, Oh, okay. Maybe this is thing that's going to get it right for me right now. And I just do the one thing and then that's it. And, and it, in a, it, it sees beyond that. And there's not pressure for things to be different right now. There's like investment and going back to that simplicity piece. It's, it's recognizing that being kind to yourself and showing yourself grace and making changes to your life in healthy ways that have that as a foundation, they compound and they grow and they feed other things and those seeds drop and new things mm-hmm. grow, you know? And, and so if we, if we can really look at how do we establish things from a kind place and how do we continue to show ourselves kindness as we go through the process, which looks like grace and trust and other things, right? Mm-hmm. Then, then we're really looking at establishing things that are sustainable because the reason we're doing them is simply because we're worth doing them for. Yeah. And that's it. And you'll feel better doing those things. Mm -hmm. I mean, just from embracing, that was very just well-rounded and, and a great explanation. I think of weaving in, I love the concept of the tapestry, right? Like Mm -hmm. everything we're talking about relates to the other things. And, Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of synergy that happens with Mm -hmm. these concepts and with kindness. I just, I always am fascinated at human nature of kind of coming from this unkind place. And we all do it. I mean, I catch myself saying unkind things to my, to myself or like thinking Mm -hmm. unkind things. And I, I'm very good at catching myself these days and be like, ah, yeah, that's not helpful. Aaron. Like let's one of the things, and I want to reference our body kindness episode, which was episode eight long time ago. Man, Uh, that does not seem that long ago. Holy cow. I know. (laughs) It's like 75 episodes ago. I know. I know. It was a long time ago. Um, but body kindness is something that's really hard for people to practice and, and to even get on board with, because the thought is if I'm kind to myself, that means I'm just good with the status quo and I'm not going to change or evolve or grow. And I really challenge that thought with people and ask them, do you really think that kindness, self-kindness, body kindness, and change or growth are mutually exclusive? Mm -hmm. Do you really think that if you're nicer with your self-talk and appreciate your body more, that that means you aren't going to take care of it and you aren't going to strive to fuel it well, or to move it or to appreciate it more. Like it doesn't make logical sense when you actually put that out there for people to see that this is a total logical fallacy. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden they're like, Oh, so kindness. And I truly believe, and we talked about this with Mark Breeden too, um, on our last discussion that when people, really appreciate their body or, and, and treat themselves with kindness, speak to themselves in kind ways, they are far more likely to engage in healthful behaviors in self-care. They're more likely to have a little bit more confidence or that desire Mm -hmm. to connect to other people because they're in a good place mentally. So I actually think it's the complete opposite effect where people think, oh, but if I'm nice to myself or if I accept this, that means that I'm just going to sit here and like, you know, keep gaining weight, or I'm just not going to go to the gym or I'm, you know, all of these things. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, no, no. I I think it's actually the opposite. And and this leads me, we'll talk about number five here in a second, but remind me to kind of circle back on this, or maybe if you're done with kindness, I can segue into that. Let's go in just a sec, because I want to say something about that. Because one, I think that's a great point that you brought up and I'm really glad you did because you're right. There is that hesitation a lot of times of like, okay, the, the assumption that co- being kind to ourselves means just being lazy and eating whatever we want. And it's like, how is that kind to yourself? You know, like, 
let's let's revisit the word kind. Like, do you know right. what kindness <laughs> means, right? And kindness, you know, and this is something I've been saying recently. Too. Sometimes kindness is doing something that feels good. Sometimes kindness is doing something that feels really freaking scary and hard, right? Like yeah. going to therapy and diving into childhood trauma, mm-hmm. a kind thing, a terrifying yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Like looking at the reasons why you haven't taken care of yourself, why you don't feel like your body is valuable and has worth just inherently hard things, mm-hmm. but kind things, right? Like kindness isn't just feel good. And, and for some reason, like that's gotten conflated. I think it's just like kindness. It's just like, mm, just, you know, whatever I want to do. And it's yeah, like complacency. Well, it's like yeah. they're used synonymously. Yeah. And I'm like, that's not, yeah. no. And it's like, well, it is whatever you want to do if it's rooted in kindness for you. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and when we're, things are rooted in kindness and what we want to do is take really good care of ourselves because we understand we're worth taking really good care of. And sure. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that means marathon and something on Netflix and ordering Chinese food and cool. Mm-hmm. I love those days, you mm-hmm. know? I've also had those days where I just feel terrible afterwards because it, it, it was just me avoiding things mm-hmm. that I need to do, you know? And, yeah. um, yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, they have often gotten mixed up and it's just, it's totally inaccurate. <laughs> and, and just to, I, I did get the definition because grace and kindness, I think can be used somewhat interchangeably, but mm-hmm. I hope we're drawing a distinction here for you all, mm-hmm. because there, there is, you know a little bit of a difference. The definition I found for kindness is the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. And I love the word considerate because you really are, you're being considerate of yourself. You're speaking to yourself in a friendly way and, Mm -hmm. and imparting that on others too, I think is important, you know, showing some kindness to others, man, we are going through a really rough, couple of freaking years right now. Right. And we're in a rough place as a society and a country. And I think as individuals, and I really think kindness is the antidote people. Like that's, that's all I'm going to say. It, it applies yep. to more than just being kind to yourself. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And, and I do think that one of the best ways to be kind to other people is to dive into that self-kindness because Mm -hmm. I think typically maybe all the time, I don't know, the reason we're unkind to others is because of internal things. And Mm -hmm. we don't, we don't naturally show kindness to people. We don't naturally show that grace to people. We don't allow other people to be human and screw stuff up and make choices that negatively affect us when we do the same thing all the time. You know what I mean? Like there's just, so I think I think that self-kindness piece is really how we can genuinely and authentically be kinder to other people is because it often that unkindness comes from internal stuff that we're just wrestling with and this dissatisfaction within ourselves. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. So our final, our fifth and final idea for you today. Now, so the reason I brought this up and said, I'm going to segue into it is Um, number five is curiosity and anybody who's listening to this, who has worked with me probably has heard me say, let's just see, Mm -hmm. let's just see how this goes. Um, I present this to people just reflecting on the body kindness talk we just had when people believe that, oh, if I'm, but if I practice body kindness, that means I'm not going to change or I'm not going to reach these goals or I'm not you know, going to grow, I might just throw back at them. Let's just see, let's just see how this goes. Let's just try it. And that curiosity can be really powerful. And it also releases judgment on your expectations, how this is going to go, how things have gone in the past. Let's just see, especially when you're approaching it with sort of a new foundation or perspective. If you are working with a a coach or a dietitian or a trainer, or, you know, anybody who's kind of helping you in this realm, that curiosity can, can be so powerful for you to address some of those past 
experiences or those fears that you have, or that Mm -hmm. desperation that things have to change right away. Like getting curious about things can just open this whole new world of observation without the pressure or judgment that often Mm -hmm. comes along with these changes. Yeah. Well, like you said, if, you know, if, if we don't allow ourselves to be curious, we don't allow ourselves to experiment and just try stuff out then, which this is what we often do. We we've got to get it right. You know, we've got to get everything, all the, the changes, all the quote unquote healthy changes we're going to bring about into our life. We've got to get them exactly right because once they go wrong, well, then we're doing it wrong. Clearly. You know, and when we're, when we're curious and we, when we, this, to me, this is such a, I, I like all five of these on this list and I get equally excited about all of them, but I, I really feel like the curiosity piece is maybe one I haven't heard talked about as much that I'm really mm-hmm. excited to, to just talk about mm-hmm. today, because when we're curious, like you said, it takes away that, that pressure of getting it right. And it opens ourselves up to the idea that maybe getting it wrong has something for me. Mm -hmm. Maybe getting it wrong can be just as important as getting it right. Maybe, maybe things not working out like we thought they were going to allows us to go, okay, but this part of it worked. So let's build on that. And then we can begin to like, just build and explore what works for you and for me on an individual basis. Cause like we talked about before, like the industry, the fitness and nutrition industries are really good at saying like, here are the options. You've got to figure out how to fit into the options and it's Mm -hmm. completely backwards. It's not the way it's supposed to work. It should be the other way around. Here are the ways to be a healthier person. What works in my life In in what way, at what frequency and what circumstances, you know, like it's got to be individualized and we we're never going to figure that out. If we can't let go of this insistence that I've got to get it right, right now and Mm -hmm. embrace curiosity and just try shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'll tell you what, I don't know of a single coach that knows exactly what every client should do right off the bat. That's Mm -hmm. not what being a coach is. A coach is, Hey, here's some good starting points based on you and your unique circumstances. Let's see. And Mm -hmm. I tell clients this all the time. Maybe this is good. Maybe it's not. We'll find out. And then we'll adapt as we need to, because we're going to learn some stuff. We're not going to approach us like, okay, you've got to do this a hundred percent. Like this is the only option it's nope. We're going to try and we'll see where it goes and then we'll figure it out from there. We'll make changes that we need to. And well, it helps people sort of break through some of those fears and those past, you know, maybe they have tried these things before a hundred times and we're saying, suggesting like, well, let's, let's give this another go. We have a few different tools now that we can use, but let's just see if, you know, if you can stick with it or if this works for you this time. And I have seen people go, oh my gosh, I can do this. This is working for me. Mm -hmm. This thing that I thought was my downfall and I could never do it. I'm approaching it in a different way, but I'm actually achieving it. Mo, that is so powerful. (laughs) Like that is nothing can... Nobody can like give you that experience. You have to live it and you have to do it. And the only way you're going to really live that experience is by being curious and trying those things out. Um, I often talk with people about making observations with their eating, observing what their body cues are telling them, observing how a fueling strategy works for, you know, their long workout observing how certain foods work with their digestive system, observing how adding a little more to breakfast impacts the rest of their day. Again, these observations are just being curious about the process and and these changes I'm making has nothing to do with right or wrong, judging what you should have done or, or what went well or what didn't go well. It's just like making these observations and kind of keeping this objective list. And I actually did this with a client, um, last week. He, I, I just started with a coaching, um, plan with him and he started putting in some observations of his week and kind of some notes on how he's eating. And I noticed that Wednesday was blank. And we were talking on Friday. So there was like Monday, Tuesday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and then like the morning of Friday and Wednesday was 
curiously blank. And so we just get to <laughs> talking about this and it turns out that he, he's like, you know, Wednesday was probably blank for a reason because it was a train wreck of a day. And I just, mm-hmm. I really screwed up. And, and so I said, well, how do you feel about kind of walking me through that? And we'll just talk about it. No judgment. We're not going to relive all of the things that, you know, you screwed up or that went awesome or whatever, but -hmm. let's just go through and just talk about objectively what happened. And we went through this practice of observation and I asked him questions that I was curious about, or that it sounded like he was kind of curious about. And we really dug into that curiosity. And once Mm -hmm. we kind of got through that day and talked about it all, I was like, so how does that day feel now? And he's like, actually way better. It just kind of opened that door for him to look at it without yeah. being so judgy and, you know, should have all over himself mm-hmm. going back yeah. and reliving that day. That's a great example. Well, and it just, I mean, yeah, we kind of got two options there, right? Like see yeah. what that experience has for us or decide we already know what it has for us. And that's just guilt Mm -hmm. about screwing it up. Yes. Like those are kind of our two options, you know? And here's the thing is, and I think this is my last thing on curiosity is that if, if we don't allow ourselves to be curious and we don't allow ourselves to explore, then how do we expect to find anything new for ourselves? Yeah. Like, like we may try a new diet or a new coach or whatever, but if, if we don't allow curiosity and experimentation and exploration, then it doesn't matter if it's new, it's the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's still the same thing, no matter what approach you take or what bow you put on it. But if you can allow yourself to be curious, and this takes bravery, I'll be honest, it right. really does, because it's counter to everything you've probably heard your entire life about being a healthier person and what it takes. And, and stepping outside of that feels scary. I understand that 100%. And so curiosity takes courage, like for sure. Mm-hmm. But if we can step into that, then we begin to see like, oh, there are ways of operating in kindness and trust and grace and simplicity and health that I didn't know I would connect with. And when we find those things, guess what? Now we're operating outside of our like little sphere of known and we're, we're expanding that. And once we get mm-hmm. some of those little shoots into new places, man, those things start to grow really quickly because we see the excitement and the benefits and the possibility of exploring and experiencing. And we take away all the pressure of getting it wrong because we understand "Eh, it's going to happen. And that's part of it. That's part of exploring. And, Mm -hmm. and, and it gets easier to, to build that courage, to push into new places. And when that happens, man, really powerful things start to happen. Mm -hmm. I I love all of your gardening growth analogies. (laughs) You're, you're totally on this theme and I love it. It's, it applies to all of this stuff. Yeah. (laughs) We're farming away. Um, the last thing I'll say about curiosity is if we've gone through this list, okay, we've given you our top five things to make your 2022 great. Mm -hmm. And you still are like, "Ah, I, I need a goal. I need that thing that is concrete and I want to make a change. Okay. Take this curiosity piece and start thinking about ideas of things you can be curious about. Do you want to, you know, try new recipes? Do you want to, um, get a new routine going with your family or, you know, in your, in your workspace? Um, do you want to take on a new project or, or create something new at work or, or in your hobby life? You know, do you want to learn a new skill, learn a language, um, take a class, not like a workout class, but like a pottery class or, you know, guitar lessons or whatever it is, get curious about some of those things that you can, you know, build into your life and that you, you know, again, it doesn't have to be necessarily related directly to physical health and fitness and diet. I mean, yes, that's what a lot of new year's resolutions are, but I really think that people can, um, get a lot of fulfillment and joy and, Uh, like you said, open new doors for themselves by being curious about something and and learning something new. So branch out and, um, and try something new. Yeah. Okay. So before we do, are you ready to do me and the mundane? 
Yeah. Are you good here? I think okay. So. Before we do that, I want to say this. So this uh-huh. is okay, at the risk of um, sounding like, I don't know, self-absorbed about us or something. I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm going to confidently say this, that I think the, the message middle as a whole, but in particular, this episode is probably very different from most of the things you're going to be hearing and seeing around the new year. And I feel very confident that that's a good thing. I feel very confident that the information we're presenting in this episode, we're presenting because we very strongly believe in it, right? This isn't to be catchy. It's this is because we believe this is the healthiest way to move forward with things. And we think this is a very important message to get out there to counter all the bullshit that you're going to run into because you're going to run into a lot of it. You're going to run into a lot of coaches and you know, nutritionists, you know, whatever, saying things that are actively harmful and hurtful and will hold you in these really unhealthy places. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, that's what the new year is known for, from my perspective. It's really good at that. And we believe this message is critical to get out there. Mm-hmm. So we're going to ask you to share this, not because, Hey, we want, you know, more people to watch us, whatever. It's because we believe this message is very, very important for physical, mental, emotional health. And so we're going to ask you to share this on your timeline, send this to a friend. Like this is important. This is really important stuff. And if people can begin to lean into these things and away from all the opposite of these things, we're going to begin to see people moving forward in truly healthy ways not just, you know, falling into the victim of diet culture and, oh, if I weigh less, I'll be more valuable, you know, all that crap, but really begin to explore who am I as a person? What does being healthy for me look like in all ways? And how do I lean into, you know, grace and trust and kindness Mm -hmm. and exploring what, what my life has for me in healthy ways. So please share this, yes. send it to a friend. This is really important stuff. And we, we really believe in it. Yes. That's my spiel. Thank you for, okay. thank you for that. I appreciate yeah. that. And yeah. while you're at it, share with us, which of the five things, or if mm-hmm. all five are resonating yeah. with you, simplicity, yep. grace, trust, kindness, and curiosity. We would yep. love to hear it. We love hearing we from our listeners. Love it. Thank you we listeners. Yeah. Thank you very much. So meaning in the mundane, um, you got one? mine was Mine was just this morning. I mean, I have, I actually have a few this week, which is Mm -hmm. um, always nice, you know, when you have multiple choices to, to pick from, but this morning I was um, invited, coerced into a track. That's a big (laughs) difference. Track track session. (laughs) So (laughs) quick little backstory. One of my friends, I turned 40 in September and this interesting thing happens when you turn 40 as an athlete, everybody who has joined the master's ranks before you suddenly is Mm -hmm. like, Oh, Aaron, do you want to be on my team for this? Do you want to come to me with this event? Blah, blah, blah. So I've entered the world into, you know, master's competition and my friend, Sarah, um, who might be listening to this invited me to come to cross country nationals in San Diego in January with her. And it's just a six K race. It's not Mm -hmm. long. It's doable for me, but I was like, holy crap, like panic training for the last four weeks. Cause I finally decided to do it like four weeks ago. So she invited me to come to this track practice. It's every Tuesday morning at five 30. And mind you, it was 24 degrees when we, when we ran this morning. So Right. Michael's like, forget (laughs) you. I am not curious about this. Nope. So I did this track practice and I've, I mean, I've done, you know, dozens of track workouts on that very track because that's where I did, you know, fair amount Mm -hmm. of triathlon training and whatnot. And while I have been resistant, which is why I use coercion as kind of the Mm -hmm. (laughs) impetus to me going, but while I've been resistant to super structured training and these like, you know, before dawn workouts and kind of putting this pressure to, you know, to perform and have metrics attached to my workouts. Um, there was this moment, it was on like the second to last, you know, hard effort where I was just like, I feel so alive right now and just yeah. so in touch with my core as an athlete. I mean, that is a huge like part that. of my identity. It always will be. 
you know, even if I can't be, you know, competitive in some realm, like I'm used to being, there's something about me like to my core that is an athlete. And I just love that feeling of being, you know, able to execute a workout to my, um, not my, not my liking, but like on my terms, I guess, Mm -hmm. like, it doesn't have to be like the certain outcome. It doesn't have to be, I didn't really pay attention to my paces. I just wanted to be consistent and do the workout. And it just, it felt really great and free. And, um, like I was saying hello to myself again, all over again. It was yeah. just a really great little experience. So what a that was fun mine. thing to like tap back into and get reacquainted. I with. know. Yeah, I know. And at five freaking 30 in the morning, I mean, my day, <laughs> my day started out early, but it started out on a high note. So yeah, that's awesome. I love that. That's great. Uh, so mine was last night. So, I mean, okay. Me and the mundane, this isn't something that I like the mundane that I do frequently, but it's something I've been doing recently. So, um, Sophie and I have been sick the last several days. She's been particularly sick, like, you know, good fever, just, we got really nasty colds and she's been okay during the day, but nights are rougher and fever spikes Mm. and she coughs a lot. So since she and I have both been sick, I've been sleeping upstairs in her room with her, you know, so I'm not like mouth breathing all over Kathleen all night long. <laughs> uh, it's true so, love right there. Yeah. Right. So, um, so I've been sleeping up with her and you know, most, most nights, you know, at some point we're, we're up getting medicine or, you know, cough medicine or getting a drink cause her throat hurts, taking, you know, her temperature and that kind of stuff. And so last night she was asleep and she has like a two twin beds in a room. And so I was getting into the one twin bed and it, it creaked a little bit. It was like, I don't know, 10 30 or 11. And she'd been out for a couple hours and she kind of stirred from the noise and was not at all awake, but just enough to understand that I was in the room. Right. Mm. And she said through the sleepiest, sweetest, groggiest <laughs> little voice, like just, she just goes, I love you, Dada, and then turns over and goes back to sleep. Oh my gosh, how cute! Like, oh, no. like, like barely conscious, and the thing she wants to say is, "Hey, by the way, I love you." I love you. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's made so my great. Day. Yeah, it was like right? a perfect cap to a day. I was like, okay, yeah, doesn't matter what happened today. Today yeah. is great. <laughs> and don't you think that's there's something magical about? someone, another human showing this very innate, almost unconscious, Mm -hmm. you know, affection or just knowing of your presence and that it's you. And, you know, just like if your spouse kind of rolls over and snuggles with you just Mm -hmm. in their sleep kind of thing, there's something really special about that too, for for her just to roll over and just know that it's you. And this is what is in my mind about you right now. That's sweet. Yeah. It was a really nice moment. All right. right. Well, happy new year, everyone. Happy new year, everyone. Yeah. Go out there and, you know, be badasses Mm -hmm. and crush some kindness and, you know, get curious and do all the things. Trust and grace and simplicity. Yeah. Boldly, boldly lean into these things. Like, I know you've got it in you. It may look different than you think it's going to, but I I know it's there. We all have it. We just got to shed all this other crap that we carry around with us and Mm -hmm. trust that doing things differently is doing things better. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for listening.